Oh, how can an explorer keep getting lost? Oh, hello everyone. Michigan Wayne, adventurer and explorer of amazing stories at your service. And since I'm here, I might as well get a little bit more comfortable. Ah, that is more like it. Welcome to Wayne Reads. I hope you're ready for a fun adventure because Michigan Wayne is here to read Benicula's Nighty Nightmare. Always remember, if you want to follow along with more amazing stories, all you have to do is like and subscribe. Now I think that the little zookeeper will be perfect to join us for today's adventure. Now that the little zookeeper is here, let's jump in. Benicula's Nighty Nightmare. Family forever. Did they ever get to London, Pop? How he asked. Eventually, Chester replied. First, they had to make the arduous journey through Hungary and Austria, Switzerland and France. In each land, Bella and Boris met other rabbits, and in time, their numbers grew. Gee, said Howie, I bet I know where they found rabbits in France. Where, Chester said, in the hutchback of Notre Dame. Howie got quite a chuckle out of this. Chester, I could see, was annoyed not to have his story taken seriously. And if they weren't there, Harry went on, they could always have checked the sore bunny. He laughed even harder, while a vacant sign went up in Dog's eyes. Chester's tail began flickering the ground again. If you don't want me to go on, he said. No, no, Howie cried. Don't stop, said Dog. We've got to know what happens next. Well, said Chester, relaxing his tail. If you insist, where was I? France, said Howie, shifting a chuckle. The hutchback. Never mind that, said Chester. After France, they crossed the English Channel and came at last to London, where they settled into Rinfield Manor, where their wearisome journey at its end. Sleep well, my children, Diabolica said to Hans and Fritz that first night. As the boys settled into two large feather beds in a tower bedroom, Hans and Fritz were so overcome with exhaustion from their travels, they barely heard the door close as Diabolica slipped out of the room. But the sound of a heavy bolt falling into place jolted them awake. We're locked in, Fritz whispered in alarm. I told you we shouldn't have spoken so freely on our way here. He knows we planned to leave him, Hans. How could he have heard, Hans said. We talked about our plans during the day when he was sleeping in that crazy box of his. Boy, what a nutcase he is. Yeah, what about Erda, said Fritz. She's as weird as he is. And those rabbits in their red eyes. Have you noticed their teeth, Hans? Have you seen how they've grown? Don't worry, Hans assured his brother. We'll be out of here tomorrow. Mark my words. Tomorrow we'll be free. And soon the two boys fell asleep. They didn't know that all this while, Dr. Diabolicus had been listening outside the door. He didn't move. Even now as they began to snore. Listen to them, he said to the housekeeper as she approached on her slippered feet. The children of the night. What music they make. Ah, but Erda, they are deserting me. How can I let them go? They are my family. They are my own. Give them eternal life, Erda suggested. Eternal life, said Diabolicus. You have given it to Bella and Boris. They will be with you always. Why not Hans and Fritz as well? I don't have time, Dalbalkish replied. It will take months to duplicate the laboratory I had in Transylvania. By then the boys will be gone. Or, if I manage to keep them here, it will only be by force, and they will hate me for being their jailer. No, Erda, they must be free. Free to live and die. Free to leave me. As one day, so shall you. He turned with a heavy heart and went into the library, where he spent the night reading. Now it was his good fortune, and the ill fortune of Hans and Fritz, that one of the books he found on the dusty shelves that night was his cousin's diary. As he turned its pages, Diabolicus made an amazing discovery that he was not alone after all. There were others like him. He was one breed of a creature known as vampires. Vampires, he learned, had ways of creating others of their kind. I don't need a laboratory, Diabolicus said, lying the book on the table beside him. He licked his lips and ran his tongue over the two pointed teeth that hung like daggers inside his mouth. Everything I need is right here. It has been here the entire time. Slowly he rose from his chair and climbed the staircase to the boys' bedroom. There were sounds of twigs snapping and leaves crackling in the woods around me. I felt sure that Diabolicus was coming closer. Closer. I looked across at Howie and Dog. Their eyes told me they felt as I did. Chester, seeing his effect on us, smiled contentedly. By morning, he said, the boys were his. But how? Howie asked. What do you mean? What does this have to do with the rabbit? said Dog. What did you say his name was? Binoculars? Benicula, Chester said. Oh. Oh, I'm coming to that, don't worry. Diabolicus had succeeded in turning Fritz and Hans, and then Erda too, into vampires like himself. He now had a wife of sorts, and sons, and pets. His happiness, like his family, was complete. Hans and Fritz thought of Diabolicus and Erda as their father and mother. Their real parents were soon forgotten. Bella and Boris, being rabbits, increased their master's happiness by adding to the family. For some reason, they had an unusually small litter. A litter, in fact, 
of one. Nobody knew what to call this new member of the family. Bella and Boris seemed almost embarrassed to have produced such a runty thing as their sole offspring, and Diabolicus wondered just what sort of race he had created, if this was the best they could manage. He did not know that Bellas and Boris had already bred others of their kind throughout Europe, nor that no sooner had they added to their numbers than those very numbers had been cut down. You see, when Fritz and Hans disappeared from Kasha von Schikis, it was believed that they had perished in the fire that they had destroyed the house of Dr. E.A.D. But the boys' parents would not give up hope that they had survived. I will live to see my sons again, their mother had proclaimed. And so her husband, what? Together with several other men from the village, set out on the trail of Diabolicus the Black Carriage. They followed them across Hungary and Austria, through Switzerland and France, and whenever they encountered a race of rabbits Ferris and Boris had left behind, they destroyed them. By the time the men arrived on England's shores, there were no vampire rabbits left. None. That is, with Bella and Boris, and that one little one without a name. One night, shortly before dawn, Diabolicus was reading a bedtime story to Hans and Fritz. Hans held the tiny rabbit on his lap, stroking his head as he listened to his new father's voice. Suddenly, they heard Erda's footsteps, racing madly upstairs. Hurry, she cried out breathlessly. Hurry, master, they're coming. Get a hold of yourself, woman, said Diabolicus. Who's coming? The peasants from Casa Vachikis. They're carrying torches. They're crying. The monster must be destroyed. Oh, master, we must leave at once. With a sense of deja vu, Diabolicus Diabolicus ran to get Bella and Boris, while hurrying the boys and Erda to the carriage behind the house. Once it is daylight and we are asleep in our boxes of dirt, he said, the horses will know where to carry us. Their escape plan seemed perfect, but just as they were about to depart, Boris leapt from his master's arms and scampered back into the house. Diabolicus ran after him. Where are you going, Papa? cried Fritz. We can't leave without you. Still a wimp, Dog commented. I shall return, Diabolicus called out. He chased Boris through the open door and was gone from sight. Now, whether Diabolicus reached Boris, we will never know. For no sooner had he set foot into the house than it erupted in flames. The innkeeper from Kashavanshikis wiped a tear from his eye, convinced that his sons were now lost to him forever. And of course they were, just not in the way he thought. Had he turned away from the blazing carnage, he would have seen a black carriage disappearing into the forest. Two boys, one clutching a tiny rabbit, were taking a last look at their home, their England. They were heading for a new life, a new land. They were heading for America. America, I said? How'd they get to America? Well, it just so happened, said Chester, that Diabolicus had prepared for an emergency such as this one. He had booked passage under an assumed name of QE2, thus enabling Erda, Fritz, and Hans to board the ship one November night and never look back. They settled in their new country keeping to themselves, always apart from all others. They saved wisely, invested in the stock market, and in time, their cash flow was sufficient to allow them to construct a duplicate of their original home, an American house of Dr. E.A.D. They lived a quiet life, and then one day, their quiet life was destroyed. Bella and her baby rabbit escaped through an open window. We don't know what happened to Bella, but we know, of course, what became of the little one without a name. He came to live with a family called the Monroes, I said, and they called him... Benicula. Right. In the house of Dr. E.A.D., I asked. Chester turned his head towards the house in the clearing. Three sets of eyes followed him. You're looking at it, he said. Fritz and Hans live there still, under other names, no doubt. Erda, though, she is no longer called that as our housekeeper. And somewhere high in a tower room, there is a laboratory, the mirror image of the one in Kasha von Schikis. The Transylvania twins will one day continue the experiments begun by their adopted father. They are waiting waiting for Benicula. The night was still. No one spoke for the longest time. Then Howie said, a hair-raising tail pop. Dog started to chuckle, but his chuckle turned quickly into a snort. In the snort, into a snore. He was sound asleep. Moments later, Howie was sleeping too. Now's our chance, Chester said. If we're not too late, we may be able to save the Monroes. And those were the last words that I heard. Oh wow, things may be getting very interesting with Howie, Chester, and Harold. What did you think, little zookeeper? I like that part too. We'll see you on the next adventure, okay? And we'll see you on the next adventure, here with Wayne Reads. Thank you for joining us, because I'm Michigan Wayne, on search for the next great story. And I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye!